Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy 4th of July weekend. Happy Independence Day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'd like to take a moment this morning and plant out these beautiful flowers on the altar. And they are given in memory of Donna Rice and are presented by her mother, May, and Sharon and Charlie Carson. I have a card here from our own Betty McBride. It says, thank you to all of you. It says, to Pastor Katie and my church family, I want to thank you for the cards and calls for my retirement and for my new knee surgery. The knee surgery is being scheduled for August 10th, unless put on hold again. Keep me in your prayers. It is a blessing to be a part of a loving and caring church family. Sincerely, Betty McBride. And then the inside of the card says, there's no mistaking the happiness that comes from knowing people with such kind and giving hearts. So, you're welcome. We love you. I believe Shirley has an announcement that she would like to make. just want to share with you that I took part in a Zoom meeting a few days ago. Uh, the meeting was set up by our district superintendent, and it was kind of a wellness check for the churches. The SPRC chairs throughout the Frederick District were all urged to take part, and I think you'll find some pieces of an interest, and at least I did. <clears throat> the main topic along with the fact that some congregations are receiving their new pastors through the appointment process today, first Sunday in July. Um, the other topic was how our church is doing with regathering. And it was very interesting. I heard, I think, one other congregation state that they either started last week or were starting this week with in-person gathering in their sanctuary. Two of them indicated that they are doing parking lot services, uh, which they drive into the parking lot, have an FM transmitter, and can hear the message through the radio and wave to people from car to car. I think everybody was continuing the virtual worship. And the majority, though, are just starting to plan, just thinking about what they need to do before they can gather in person. And it just made me realize how far along we are. And part of that, a big part of that, is because Pastor Katie got us started very early on. And so I thank you, Pastor Katie, for your guidance your leadership that got us going so that the task force, who I thank, um, could do, get ready for gathering. And they continue to do things every week just to remind us to continue being careful. But I really want to thank each of you for cooperating. I know none of us like these hot, uncomfortable masks. None of us like sitting six feet from our friends. But it truly is a small price to pay to know that each of us are doing what we can to keep each other safe. So I just ask you to continue doing what you're doing. Please keep your mask on until you get to your car. And here and elsewhere, just continue to follow the guidelines. We are prepared to step back if we need to, if the situation dictates. But so far, everything is going very well, and we really just appreciate your cooperation. Thank you. Shirley always forgets to thank herself. Her leadership is strong and true, and so Shirley, we thank you. You know, if I have an idea at 6 o'clock at night, and I say, Shirley, let's get this done at 5 o'clock in the morning, is my email with the whole thing completed. Please don't let her fool you. She's very, very active in getting things done. Are there any other announcements? Oh, 
Then let us, oh yes, Roberta. We wanted to just thank everyone for um, for the cards, the prayers, the food, the calling, coming to the general of the viewing for our daughter. Thank you all so very much. For those who were unable to hear Laverta and Harold, I want to thank you so much for all the support that they've been shown through the trials with her daughter for the cards and the calls and just the prayers. And she says thank you so much. Adele? Barbecue chicken next Sunday. Ain't it going to Say that again. Barbecue chicken next Sunday. What only? Ham slowly. Chicken hams? Half. Okay. <laughs> I thought he said hands only. I'm like, chickens don't have hands. No dinner, no nonsense. Chicken hands. Okay. So no sitting down and eating. You're taking them home. It's all good. All right, I didn't know if I was going to be able to make it through the summer without that, so I'm feeling very relieved. Chicken house, not hands. <clears throat> Any other announcements? <clears throat> All right, well, let us prepare our hearts for worship. should be on the screen.
It's hard to hear you with the mask on, so you better just hear yourself. <laughs> Come to me, Jesus, and what? We come, we come to you. you. Come to me if you are tired. We come, come to you. you. Come to me if you carry burdens. We, we come, come to you. you. Come and discover rest for your soul. Amen.
He was just a common veteran, and his ranks were growing thin. But his presence should remind us we may need his likes again. For when countries are in conflict, then we find the military's part is to clean up all the troubles that the politicians start. If we cannot do him honor, while well, he's here to hear the praise, then at least let's give him homage at the ending of his day. What she's saying is, y'all are stuck with me for another year. <laughs> yes, Harold. Uh, this is a joy. Our grandson, Michael, graduated this year, and he's been accepted uh, uh, to college in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Do you know which one? I think North Carolina State, I think. Because there's so many down there. I know. <laughs> yes, Joyce. <laughs>
PhD in what? Math. Math. My least favorite subject. So glad there are people who can do it because I don't like it. Yes, Connie? I have a couple of concerns. Uh, well, um, actually, a, a thank you from uh, our friend Carolyn Howard. Her husband, Chet, did pass away this week from COVID, and uh, they live out Flagstaff, Arizona. So uh, just prayers for her uh, to, to be fine. And um, also, my niece in Indianapolis, her husband is a lieutenant on the... Indianapolis Police Force and their house was targeted this week uh, with shootings uh, into their house from drive-by rioters due to the fact he's a police officer so just like to keep them in in our prayers and all the police officers thank them for the job they do it's 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 tough out there for them yeah, it is. Linda? Well, Pat Stevens in Walkersville had a stroke last week, and uh, they expected him to be out Saturday. But he's still very disoriented, and they are keeping him. He did the first thing I know. Yes, Charlie? May was released from the hospital on Thursday, and she's recuperating with us. Uh, she, the nurse came by on Friday, and uh, evaluated her and she'll start physical therapy this week so uh, she appreciates all of your cards and your phone calls and uh, she's very thankful to be a, a part of this congregation okay. <coughs> yes John any status on uh, Bobby and uh, Millie Romsberg uh, Bobby is fine he is anxious to come back but he is not um, he doesn't really understand social distancing, so they've decided to keep him, I don't want to say grounded, but you know, in-house until, until more restrictions have been lifted because he's so excited at the thought of coming back to church. Um, so keep him in your prayers. He's pretty anxious for that. Um, I have not heard anything on Millie. Sharon, have you? No. No. I have heard, um, I guess you have an email about Sylvia, who is slowly recuperating, but the more time she spends away from home, the more confused she is, um, and would really appreciate cards from you guys to, to kind of be reminded that she is loved. She's home? Yeah, she's at Citizens, and um, the address is in the email, and if you don't have it, shoot me an email, I'll make sure you get it. Any news on Pat? How's she doing? Settling in? Rolling back. Okay. Anyone else? I do have a joy. Ruby was back in the office. I missed that smiling face. Um, and she's happy to be back. She said she feels like she's training for the job all over again because it's been so long, but she was excited to be there. So if all hearts are clear, let us go to the Holy One, Lord, Maker of all, Healer, Comforter, Counselor, we come before you this morning, calling on you, asking for your healing, asking for your mercies. And we lift up today those who are sick, those who are hurting in other ways, those who have lost loved ones. And this morning, we lift up in particular Jim Hutz, that he may recuperate. We lift up Lindsay to you, Lord, that she heals quickly and that she doesn't 
um, have adverse conditions because of a rusty fish hook. <clears throat> Lord, we lift up Betty McBride to you. We give thanks for her many years of work, and we give thanks that she is able to retire. And so, Lord, we just ask that she be able to have the surgery she needs to make her feel better, to make her be able to walk. We lift up my poor to you. Lord, let there be good news and some healing. We lift up Wayne to you, Lord, that his tests go well and that there are no further complications. We lift up Diane and Denny that they might be healed, continue to heal. We lift up young ladies with kidney stones, Joyce's niece, granddaughter, sorry. Um, we lift up Bob Hess, who has suffered a stroke. Lord, we lift up Connie's nephew-in-law. We lift up his family as they deal with the horror of being targeted for just wanting to do a good job. Lord, we lift up the police to you everywhere. We ask that you put a hand upon them and protect them and guide them and keep them safe, Lord, and let them do their job in the best ways possible. We know that there is trouble everywhere in every profession, Lord. And today we just lift up the police who are under this microscope right now and being treated as though they are criminals. Lord, we give thanks for May being released and being able to be home with Sharon and Charlie, Lord, but we ask for continued healing not just for the physical therapy, but for the shingles that continues to plague her for so long. We lift up Sylvia to you, Lord, that she might heal enough to go home and be surrounded by her things and become more acclimated and less confused, Lord. We give thanks for Joyce's granddaughters who um, are prospering well. Um, one is a manager at Chick-fil-A, one just got a job with a veterinary clinic near her work, and one just graduated with a PhD in math. We give thanks for Ruby being returned to her job that she loves so much. We give thanks for Pat, who is settling in and figuring out and unpacking a life. Lord, we give thanks for the opportunity to spend another year together. Lord, I thank you that I can be here for another year and that you have entrusted me with another congregation, Lord. But I thank you so much for this congregation, which goes above and beyond I thank you for the people who are in the leadership positions in this church, and I thank you for the people who come and fill the pews and give their hearts sincerely to you. And Lord, I ask that you continue to rain down blessings upon us all, in Jesus' name. Amen. I do not understand my own actions, but I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me that is in my flesh. 
I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I, what, I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I went to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self, but I see in my members another law of war, the law of my mind making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with my mind I am a slave to the law of God, but with my flesh I am a slave to the law of sin. The word of God is for the people of God. Our preparatory hymn today sorry, bear with me, my computer didn't match. It's that old rugged, the old rugged cross, um, and the words will be up there. Um, you can stand, please, as we um, honor the cross.
played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. The word of God for the people of God. Peace be to God. Will you pray with me? Lord, make me an instrument of your message. Remove all of me and pour your spirit out upon me and your people here today. Amen. So last year, I was all excited that I was going to be a brand new pastor at a church on the first weekend of July. I mean, it's Independence Day, right? It's a great thing. So I get my brand new book of worship that I got from somebody who was very good to me. And I'm looking up, there's no Independence Day in the Christian calendar. I was like, what? That doesn't seem right because our country is founded on Christian principles. So, um, again, I was new, I didn't put a whole lot of research into it then, but this year I did a little bit more. And what I've discovered is that Independence Day is an American tradition and Methodism is a global tradition, and that's why it's not on there. But it also has to do with the difference between independence and freedom. So this is an incredible time of celebration, 4th of July, honoring the veterans, honoring the, the people who fought to make our country free from England, and those who have fought to keep this country free. So for that independence and freedom, I just want to take a moment and give thanks to the Creator, because it is a good and wonderful thing. And regardless of what is going on in our country, it is still, in my opinion, one of the best places to live on Earth. But as I said, there is a difference between independence and freedom. And one of them has its origins in God, and the other one originates from man. Independence means self-sufficiency. It means that we are not dependent on anybody else for anything, and that nobody is dependent on us for anything. That is what true independence means. Freedom, however, is the ability to choose for ourselves actions that we know will have consequences, good or bad, either for ourselves or to others, and sometimes all of the above. See, when God created the world, he created living things to be dependent on others, one way or another. As humans, we were charged from Genesis with caring for the world that God created. Each and every living thing, from plants to animals to other human beings, Adam was given that responsibility in the garden, and we today are responsible for carrying that forward. However, we have to make a choice to fulfill that duty. That is freedom. The ability to choose for ourselves to decide, knowing that things can flourish or wither based on our decisions. Our freedom to choose does not make us independent, though, because others suffer consequences along with us. When my first marriage fell apart, I never wanted to be dependent on a man again. I was in an abusive relationship and I just didn't want to deal with that. So I got a job because I have children who were dependent on me. I needed to clothe them and feed them and shelter them. I was working, I paid my bills, and I was doing the very best that I could. 
And I confess that I thought I was independent. I had it all going on. Turns out I was wrong. I depended on my roommate to pay her half of the bills. I depended on my babysitter to take good care of my children while I was at work. And I depended on my health to keep it all going. So when my gallbladder attack happened and I couldn't work and I couldn't pay my bills, it all fell apart. I was truly humbled and I ended up learning that dependence on God was necessary in order to get me through the most difficult times. It turns out that I had freedom to choose how I handled each situation, but I didn't always get to choose the situation. I made some good choices, and I made some bad choices, and I reaped the consequences of both. And I know that I'm not alone in this. I watch my children make decisions, and it's the hardest thing I can do every day to not say, no, don't do that. Or no, do it this way, because they have to have that freedom. And this is what God does for us. He gives us this gift of freedom. So what do we do with the gift? I mean, all the gifts that we get from God are meant to be used in service to others. Because the greatest gift we received of, from God was for all of us, the life of Jesus, the death of Jesus, and the resurrection of Jesus, and with that gift came the responsibility of thinking of and loving others. We are commanded to love and care for each other, and when we exercise our freedom to obey, we are worshiping in thanksgiving for all that God has given us. Every victory comes from battle. Traditionally, the United States has gone to battle over and over again to defend freedom. Not just our freedom, but the freedom of others who are in situations where they are unable to fight those battles for themselves. And we've done a great job. But now, the battle we fight is within ourselves. That's what Paul tells us. It's for our souls. And Paul breaks it down quite simply. He says it is flesh versus the spirit. Now we certainly live in a world that encourages us to satisfy our physical desires, titillating our senses, food, drink, ego, glamour, immediate self-gratification. It feels good. But the truth is that it's all lies. It never really satisfies, and it never lasts. Because that's how evil works. It's always about making one's self feel good in the moment. So when we use our freedom to choose self and not to help others, we're sinning. But here's the great thing about freedom. We are free to change any time. We are free to make better decisions. We are free to be different. We don't have to be stuck in our patterns. We can choose to be in relationship with God and with each other. We can choose interdependence and caring, which we need in order to have love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Do these things sound familiar? These are the fruits of the Spirit and are meant to be gifts from God as well. And we need these gifts in order to build a community of faith as well as be neighbors to all. When we choose to love God first, then the choice is really simple. So as we celebrate the freedom that makes this country great, remember that it is a gift from God. When we exercise our freedom, let us focus on God and the relationship we need to have 
with each other. Remember that with true freedom comes true responsibility and consequences. And we need to choose wisely and prayerfully. May it be so. Will you pray with me? Great and glorious God, thank you. Thank you for allowing us to be here in this great country. Thank you for giving us the gift of freedom and help us to choose wisely when we are exercising that freedom. Amen. So I know that I said we were going to get the elements as we came in, but I felt that that was a little too clinical. So today, when it comes time for receiving, I would like you to come up and I will hand you um, communion elements after they've been blessed. And you can take one for your spouse if they're not here. And um, take them home and celebrate the communion meal together. So the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we have turned away and our love failed, your love remains steadfast. You delivered us from captivity and made covenant to be our sovereign God and spoke to us through the prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are filled with your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to announce that the time has come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. So on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread Imagine bread. He took bread and he gave it to his disciples. He said, take and eat. This is my body, which has been given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. Again, he gave thanks to you. He gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. For this is the blood of, my, of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these acts, of your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. 
make them be for us the body of blood, body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And let us pray boldly with the confidence of children of God, the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I know this looks different, but it is still the body and blood of Christ poured out for us. So as you take your bag and you, as you take it home to celebrate, remember that you are in communion with Christ and with your family as we do this. So the ushers will come and lead you, let you know when you can come up. I will hand you a bag. If you need a second bag for your spouse, please let me know.
might go out into the world and strengthen in the strength of your spirit and give ourselves to others in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Did you know these are hot? Oh, please rise for our final hymn, Pass It On. Yes, sir. 